This lesson is for my sixth graders, lesson 1.1, division with multi-digit numbers. Um, we'll start off by just giving you a reminder. Division is how many times you can split things up equally or how many times you might uh, one group might fit into a number. Uh, as an example, maybe how many groups of five people can I fit into my classroom of 100 chairs, assuming I had a classroom of 100 chairs. And you guys have been working these for a while now. Uh, I know it's still a work in progress and that's fine. Uh, you've been using this algorithm for a while too. So, but I know it still does need practice and in time you'll get more and more confident with it. But just a reminder on the algorithm, we always ask ourselves when we're doing, we're using this style to, to break down our division, how many times can five fit into one? And obviously it doesn't. I always tell my kids, go ahead and mark it that it doesn't because as we get into decimals later if things don't line up correctly it's going to be a mess so let's help keep things lined up correctly then we say okay well if it doesn't fit into one at all how many fives fit into ten well five times two is ten so i'm going to put the two up here five times two is ten none left over a uh, common mistake is people will say oh i'm done it's two nope remember we've got to go to the end of the number invite this guy down to play and then we're asking ourselves how many fives fit into 100. I'm sorry, how many fives fit into zero? Well, we don't need any at all. So the answer is 20. Okay, so it's all the same still. Um, it's still the same algorithm. It's still the same division. It's just we're going into much bigger numbers here. And at first it really does make you feel like you need to panic, but don't, don't panic. It's all gonna be okay. Um, it's still the same process. So this time I'm asking myself, how many, what times 92 is gonna get me into this whole thing? But again, this algorithm lets us break it down. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and break it down. One thing that gets people panicked is, I don't know my 92s, like I know my threes, three times this, three times that, I know my fours, I know my fives. I don't know my 92s, and I don't either, and I don't think anybody does. So. Don't let that scare you off. We'll use what I call a math lab to help us through that. I'll show you what it is. But first I'll ask myself, how many 92s fit into two? I always go in my one step at a time, one bite at a time, um, and none do. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that so that I can keep things nice and neat. How many 92s fit into 22? None, right? It's too little, 22 is too small. I can't fit 92 into that. So I'm gonna mark it again. None do. Okay, well now I'm getting to a number that I can do. How many 92s fit into 220? All right, well 92s will fit into 220, but I'm not really sure how many. I do use a little bit of my rounding skills to kind of figure it out. 92 is pretty close to 100, and this is pretty close to 200, so I'm guessing it's gonna be about two times. But I'll go over to my math lab and I will try it 92 times 2 and I leave it over there because you never know when I'll need it later as I divide. That does fit. Can I fit it three times? Well, let me experiment in my math lab. 9 times 3 is 27. Uh, no, that's too much. I just blew my eyebrows off in the lab, right? It's just too much. 276 is higher than 220. I'm, my goal is always to get as close as possible without going over. So I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna say 92 times two gives me 184. I do my subtraction. And then I bring down my next friend. Always, uh, one other thing, always check and make sure that the remainder before you bring down is smaller than your divisor because if it's bigger, you could have gone more and that can mess you up. So always double check that. Then I'll bring down my new little friend. Um, how many times now will 92 go into 368? Um, again, this is almost 100. This is between 300 and 400, almost 400. Um, and I already know that times three is 276, so I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna go kinda high. I'm gonna try times five. Just guessing. Uh, two, times five is 10, five times nine is 45, plus one is 46. Way too high, Mrs. Sanchez. 
I blew my eyebrows off. So back it up, back up the truck. Four times two is eight. Nine times four is 36. And ding, 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 ding. Winna, winna, chicken dinner. So I'm gonna go ahead and put four there. And 368 gives me a remainder of zero. So something to keep in mind too is it's not always perfect. Our division doesn't end perfectly and beautifully with a remainder of zero every time. Sometimes there's change left, you know? There's not a whole dollar, it's, there's change left. So um, we call those remainders uh, and they're no big deal. They're, they're fine to deal with, they're not difficult to deal with. So I'm just gonna show you how we deal with those while we practice division. So I'm looking at this 18 and I'm asking myself, how many 18s fit into one? Well, none, Mrs. Sanchez, because one's tiny. You can't fit 18 people, oopsie. You can't fit 18 people into one chair. That's not gonna happen. How many 18s will fit into 12? Well, again, none. Um, how many 18s now fit into 127? Okay, I do know 18's gonna fit. I'm not sure how many times. Uh, 18 fits in, or 18 is nearly 20. And 127 is, well, I'll count by 20s, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. So maybe six-ish times, maybe seven. I'm not sure because that's a little smaller than 20. So I'm going to go over to my math lab, math lab, and do my experiments. I'm going to try 18 times 6. 8 times 6 is 48. 6 times 1 is 6, plus 4, 7, 8, 9, 10. If I add 18 to that, that's going to be too high, but I'll show you in case your brain wants to see it. 7 times 8 is 56. 7 times 1 is 7, plus 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, oh, it actually does fit. It's a good thing I tried it. I knew that was going to happen. I didn't, but whatever. 7 goes in, and 126 below. I get my remainder of a 1. And then I bring down my next friend to play after I check to make sure that one was smaller than the 18. Now, how many 18s fit into 14? Well, none. It doesn't fit. 14 is too small. Uh, a common mistake is people will just go ahead and bring the 9 down. But before you do bring the 9 down, you've got to say that 18 doesn't fit into 14. So I'm going to put the 0 up here that says, no, doesn't fit. Then I can bring down that 9. How many 18s into 149? Um, well, I tried times 7, so let's experiment with times 8 and see what happens. 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That is as close as I'm getting, because if I add 18 to that, I'm up in the 160-something. So I'm going to use this. This is going to be an 8. This is going to be a 144. I get five left over and I'm at the end of my number. So that's fine. All I'm gonna do for now is just say remainder five and be done. Um, actually, what you'll get to later is um, I would write the answer either as 708 remainder five for now, but as we get later into the year, we're gonna write it as 708 with five left out of the 18 we were dividing. So we write it as a fraction. In fact, if you wanna skip the remainder part and just write it this way from here on out, that's fine too. Just take the remainder, put it on top, and then the denominator here is what, you were, what your divisor was in the first place. And that's correct too. One last thing, um, sometimes you'll see the division written uh, vertically like this, I'm sorry, horizontally like this. And um, that's, that just is telling you I have this many things being split fairly into this many pieces. So the front number is always what's being shared. And that always goes inside the house of the algorithm, I guess we can call it. Um, because in here is always what is being shared. If I had 6,114 6, candy bars and I wanted to share it amongst 63 people, um, that's what's being split up is the candy bars. So that goes inside the house. How many pieces it's splitting into goes outside the house and then you divide it. Let's use this one to practice your division. You can pause this video, try dividing it, and then push play to see how you did.
Okay, so you have now tried to divide it. Maybe you got it, maybe you got stuck, that's fine. Uh, let's, let's see how you did. So I'm gonna do 63 into six, which does not go, so I'm gonna say so. Then I'm going to set, ask myself how many 63s into 61? Well, it's close, but it doesn't fit still, so it doesn't go. Uh, 63 into 611, yeah, that's definitely going in uh, almost, because it was almost so close here. I'm thinking it's a, a pretty high amount. So I'm going to try 63 times, I'm going to go way big, 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 9 times 6 is 54, plus the 2 carryover is 56. Yeah, that fits. And I can't, this algorithm keeps us from going anything above 9. So that's as high as I can go. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and hopefully my remainder here is less than 63, or I've made an error. 11 minus 7, 4. 10 minus 6, 4. And yes, look, my remainder so far is smaller than that. That's good shape. We're in good shape. Then I bring down my friend. How many 63s fit into 444? Well, 9 was 567, so I mean, it's probably pretty up there. Maybe I'll try 7 in my math lab. 3 times 7 is 21. 7 times 6 is 42, 43, 44. Ooh, good guess. I'm not fitting 63 into, more into that and staying under 444, am I? So that's the uh, answer there. So it's going to be a 7. That gives me 441 with a remainder of 3. I can write R3, R3 here, or I can go ahead and just write with 3 out of 63 left. Now, if you remember simplifying fractions, if it looks like it can be simplified, go ahead. I'll post a link to a reminder how to do that, and we'll practice it in the year. So if you don't really uh, feel comfortable on simplifying fractions for now, leave it. But 3 divides evenly into both of these. 3 goes into 3 once and into 63 21 times. So I could technically call that answer this. Uh, so I can call it this. I can call it this today for uh, that. Or I can call it uh, reduced version of this is that. That's it for this lesson.